In the previous tutorial, we saw that when we create a loud bang through the ADC object, which takes in sound through the microphone, we can feed it through the threshold object to create a trigger that plays an external sound file, so a wave file, essentially. So if I make a loud bang, we get that sound file. So just a little bit of a variation on that. I'm going to create uh, two more sound files, um, and I'm going to randomly play them on a loud clap. So this is going to involve, I'm just going to get rid of that uh, bang object there. Uh, I'm going to create two more messages here, uh, very similar to this one here. So I'm just going to take that and copy it again. And my two extra sound files, one is called sound1.wave, and the other one is called music.wave. Okay. Now, the randomness of this item. We need to insert the random object, and we want a random number between 0 and 3. And if you were not sure how to use the random object, just uh, right-click and go for the help patch. It's pretty straightforward. And I'm going to bang that random object anytime there's a loud noise. And then I'm going to put in a select object, cell for short. And I have three different uh, options, 0, 1, and 2. So that should be the output from the random object. I'm kind of running out of space here, so let me just move this a little bit down here. And uh, like so. And uh, we'll just take the outlet from this random into the inlet of select. And then if I get a 0, I will play this message. If I get a 1, I will play this sound wave. And if I get a 2, I'll get this sound wave here. And we want to connect the, all of those into the read SF. So we should have random numbers coming through here from the random object. And just to show you that, I'm just going to connect a number box as well to this outlet from the random object. So let's see how that works. On loud bangs, which is a clap. Now, coincidentally, that um, first of all opened music.wave, and then we got sound1.wave as well, because the sound from music.wave fed back in through the microphone and triggered the second sound file. Uh, but not to worry, we could play around with that with the actual different lag times, the buffer times that are in the threshold object. Again, if you want to see more about that, right-click and go for the help patch on threshold, although I find it's not entirely accurate on how threshold works, so you need to possibly look up some of the different uh, pure data forums as well. But let's go for another hand clap. Just uh, coincidentally happened to be the same one. Let's go for another one. Hopefully we'll get a different sound. Again, these are all random. There is one, which is the second one, sound that one that wave. Hopefully we'll get a zero at some stage. Now that was two, and again it triggered one again. Let me just change the actual lag time here on that. I know that music.wave is uh, four seconds long, so let us change this to, let's say, four and a half seconds, which is four, uh, 4,500 milliseconds. Maybe that will cure that. So once more, let's hoping we're going to get duck whistle.wave. No. Well, at least the 4,500 lag time. Uh, the buffer zone after the uh, threshold has worked. So again, let's go for a zero. Come on, it's like rolling a dice. No. Nope. What are the chances? Hey, at last. So at last we got a zero there. Uh, and now we're not getting any. There we go. Uh, that was a zero. Uh, again, we've got a, a lag time there of four and a half seconds, so it's not going to work until after four and a half seconds. And, and we could go on and on, but that's generally the rough idea of just playing random sounds. And again, could be useful for different art installations, things like that. And uh, so there.